In this tutorial, we'll look at how to add data to a web map from a table or delimited text file. Right now we're looking at a web map that I've previously created, saved, and shared to be publicly accessible. And it consists of two layers. One is this population density layer, which is the orange polygons. I got this layer from an online source using the Add Search for Layers option, which allows me to use layers that have been created by other institutions or people and have been made publicly accessible for anyone to include into their web map. But you have limited control over that layer and can't really edit it. I have a second layer, this geology temp, which is this green polygon right here, which I created in the map using the map notes function, going to add, add map notes, and then physically drew the polygon and then added all of these attributes. But that can be time consuming, particularly if you have a lot of features that you want to include in the map. So if you have more than a few items to add to the map from scratch, a more efficient way would be to use a table uh, or list of the items with their coordinates. So to do that, you would create a table uh, either in Excel or some other kind of spreadsheet. Uh, here I have a list of 13 businesses, um, one business per row or record, um, and it's broken into columns. The first column has the name of the business, then I have a description. The description is going to be quite long. And then crucially, I have two columns with the coordinates of each business, and the coordinates are in decimal degrees. And you'll notice too that the formatting, or excuse me, the coordinates um, can be positive and negative. Uh, and that's important because that indicates the hemisphere. So, for example, in the Western Hemisphere, longitudes that are in decimal degrees need to be negative. And that's the only way that the map will recognize them. If you have the wrong sign for your coordinates, you could end up on the wrong side of the planet. I have columns here with URLs to images, and these are images that I want to incorporate into the pop-ups for the features I'm going to create. And these images uh, can come from existing websites or, in this case, from a social media account such as Flickr, which I used here. And again, these are the URLs to those individual images. I have two because I have one for a smaller version of the image, depending on what the application is. And then I have other columns with other information that I might want to include into the pop-ups. In theory, you could have as many columns as you wanted, as many attributes, uh, but you can only have 250 features at a time. I only have 13, so there's no problem. Once the table is organized with the appropriate information that you're going to need, you need to save it as in the proper format, which is as a comma separated values format. So in Excel, I'll go to File, Save As, and then specify that the type is a CSV. And this is a, uh, this, it has to be in this format in order to be readable um, by the web map. So once I save it, I can go into my web map, go to Add, Add Layer from File, Click the Browse button to search for the file that I've saved. In this case, this is the file, CSV file. Open, import the layer, and it adds the points using the coordinates that I supplied in the table. Right from the bat, it's asking you what, how you want to symbolize those um, individual features. So your options are to use different symbols for each feature, in this case, in terms of their names. A heat map, in which it shows a uh, basically areas of concentrated features, or to use the same kind of symbol for all of the points. In this case, I want to use these unique symbols, but I want to alter the size just a bit so they're a little larger, more visible. So I'll click on the options, and then over here I see this color palette, so I'll click on that so I can alter all the symbols at the same time. I'm going to increase the symbol size just a tad bit. You can see they grow a bit, so I'm thinking that's probably large enough. Hit OK. You'll see on the map they're all larger now. And if I'm satisfied with the way it looks, I'll click on OK, and then click Done. And so I have all of my items on there. Um, if I click on any item, it'll show me the attributes that were in the table for that item. In a later video, I'll show you how to configure those pop-ups. For the moment, just like we did earlier with the geology temp, this um, layer that we've just created from those coordinates in that table exists only in the current map. If we want to make sure this is accessible in the future in other maps, we need to save this layer. So in the ellipses or more options button right there, we're going to scroll down until we see save layer. And it's going to prompt us to name the layer. So we'll call it psychics layer. It has to have a um, tag. So there's one right there. And then Let's 
sort description. I'll create the item. All right. And then, of course, I'll always save the map. So now what I've done is I've saved the map so that the Psychic Slayer will always appear in this map. But crucially, I've also saved the Psychic Slayer itself so that it's accessible. And to check on that, we can always go back to My Content and we can look at the items that we've saved. So we should find that we have our web map, which is called This Is My First Map right here. We see that green polygon geology temp that we created earlier. And we also see now this point layer that we've created uh, for the psychics or point layer features. Notice that it's currently not shared. So again, we need to make sure that we share it. So we want to view the item details. Click on the share button. Make sure it's shareable with everyone. And now when we go back to my content, we should see that it's shared with everyone. And now it can be used in this map and other maps as well.